Good evening. I don't, if I knew how to say it in Mexican, I would, but I don't. Oh, Buenas Noches. So if I could have your attention, we're going to go. My name is Pat Kelleher, and I'm with Family and Community Resources. And first of all, I want to thank all of you for being here with us this evening. Due to a couple of um, prior commitments to those people who support us all the time in the big city of Boston and throughout the state, we're going to take things a little out of order. So I'm going to ask my honorees to pay, pay close attention. So at this time, I would like to invite up to the podium our wonderful Senator Michael Brady. Thank you very much, Pat. And I want to also invite our Representative Claire Cronin up here because, you know, we hear a lot of things in that so-called fake news about nobody getting along in government. And despite what you may hear in Washington, D.C., we have a great team in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and in the city of Brockton, and we're very fortunate that we have a, we're like family between Representative Cronin, Representative Jerry Cassidy, and Rep. Dubois, and myself, and we're very fortunate. And both Democrats and Republicans in Massachusetts get along and get things done. Shocking what you may hear out of Washington. So. That's why I'm inviting Claire Cronin with me, because we work as a team. And uh, I'm very honored to be here. I, I want to thank Family and Community Resources for all they've done and, and uh, for all you continue to do for our communities. And the three honorees, I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Appling. And I have to say, I had Dr. Appling as a housemaster in the yellow building. And I won't say how many years ago. But there is a place in heaven for her, because she still talks to me to this day. So, But uh, she was very active with St. Patrick's Church and great friends with our good uh, friend, Mary Virginia Curtis, as well. And, and she's done many, many things for our community. So the first honoree that we're going to give a citation to is Dr. Claire Appling. And, and Dr. Appling. This is for your tireless work over the past, we won't say how many years, to promote health, wellness, and education to the residents of the city of Brockton. And this is signed by the President of the Senate, Harriet Chandler, myself. And thank you for I'm all you've done. I'm most appreciative of this, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to get over here. Not, not to try to outdo Mike Brady, but not only was Dr. Appling the housemaster when I was there, but she gave me piano lessons when I was a child. <laughs> she, she was my neighbor on Moraine Street, and she very nicely uh, took her time on Sunday mornings and gave me piano lessons. So there you go, Mike, top that. <laughs> Uh, so, on behalf of the House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Mass House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Dr. Claire Appling in recognition of your being honored by family and community resources and for your commitment to helping those in need. And it's signed by Representative Dubois, Representative Jerry Cassidy, by myself, and by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo. So, congrats. Thank you very, very much. She's coming back later. <laughs>
Yeah, we're going to get the honorees up later because the mayor's running a little late, so he has some presentations to do when he arrives a little later. The next honoree is Mark Lindy, who we've known very well. Let's give him a round of applause. Mark has very, been very active in the community, not only running the content. Well, I go back to the days of content on cable. Yep. It's changed hands a few times, but thank you for all you've done in our community. And this is in recognition of being chosen as a worthy recipient of the Wayne McGalsa Community Service Award offered by Family and Community Resources. And we're very grateful as well. I know you serve with Wayne, and Wayne's been a great friend to all of us in the community, and he served on the board, and uh, he is greatly missed, but I know he's looking down up in heaven uh, in good uh, spirits for all of us here. So Absolutely. thank you. To Mark, uh, my childhood friend from Whitman School, um, be it hereby known to all that the House of Representatives offers our sincerest congratulations for your being honored by Family and Community Resources for your commitment to helping those in need, and most importantly for receiving the Wayne McAllister Community Service Award, which is so well deserved. So on behalf of the Speaker of the House and the Brockton delegation, congratulations. Mary's good at this. Oh. Okay. Which way? Come on back in, Mike. Come on. I will once I. No, no, over here. Okay, this way. Okay, this way. Usually I'm behind the camera. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. And then we have one more, and I'm very honored to present this next citation to Erin Spaulding for your, hey. And this is for your 20 years of commitment to youth development, family services, mentoring, and academic achievement initiatives with the Old Colony YMCA, and thank you for everyone at the YMCA as well. I began my morning with Erin this morning. We had the Old Colony Y legislative breakfast at 7.30 this morning, so it was great to begin the morning with her, get into the evening with her, but uh, for all of you that don't know Erin personally because she doesn't live in Brockton, uh, but Erin has worked for many, many years at the Family Life Center, which is part of the Old Colony Y. For 12 years, I served on the board of the Old Colony Y, and it was my sincere privilege and honor to work with this woman who I have to say is one of the most selfless human beings I have ever had the privilege to meet. So there's nothing better than to be able to hand her that tonight. So. point I would like to ask um, Beth Shear from my board of directors um, to come up. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'd like to invite the rest of the board members up to join me in a toast, please. Oh, I gotta go 
Oh, where is she? She's on the plane. We are. We are. We are. She's in spirit. We are one with Susan. Susan, did you guys know that Susan is going to see the next one? She was coming. Yeah. Oh, she was coming. Over here. I don't want to be all by myself. I don't know. Mike's not going to be here till later. Are you his proxy? Yeah. Is that <laughs> I didn't get to put lipstick on. Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> okay, so I, again, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight, and I would like to toast family and community resources for 50 years of success into another 50 more. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. I'm Pat Kelleher from Family and Community Resources, and this is our 50th anniversary. Uh, before we get started with um, uh, the larger part of our program, um, there are a couple of things I wanted to remind you. We're going to go through the program. And then we're going to give you a period of time to close up the silent auction before we go into the live auction. And also I want to remind you that there, are f there is a fabulous raffle going on that includes two Patriots tickets. There are only 100 tickets that can be sold. There are two Patriots tickets, parking, a tailgate party, and a hotel room for the night of the game. Um, and those raffle tickets are in the back. They're $25 each. You can only purchase two per person. Um, so somebody will be walking around, I think, with those tickets. Um, at this time, unfortunately, um, the mayor of the city of Brockton was called away and he wasn't able to be here. I just need to say he has been an avid supporter of our agency. And we are eternally grateful for all that he's done. We've been able to garner some funding through the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. The mayor has assigned people to sit on different committees. They're an mem active member of our domestic, viol domestic and sexual violence task force. Um, so without further ado, I would like to have you hear a proclamation being read by the mayor's office. Good evening. My name is Andrea Burton, and I am here on behalf of the mayor to share his congratulations and just his heartfelt uh, appreciation for this program and for everyone who's, who's done their part. So, got to put the glasses on. Uh, so, I'm going to read this proclamation. Whereas in 1968, a group of Brockton residents concerned with families in need established family and community resources, and whereas this organization has been beneficial to thousands of people over the course of the past 50 years, and whereas this organization has been at the forefront of important issues facing society, including domestic violence, mental health and substance abuse, and a half century in, Family and Community Resources continues to be a valuable resource for those in need with no signs of slowing down. And we wish this organization the best of luck as it moves into the future while offering our help and collaborative efforts as you move into the next 50 years of your mission. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Bill Carpenter, as mayor of the city of Brockton, hereby proclaims May 4th, 2018 as, okay, back to the glasses, sorry about that. I was trying to show off like I didn't need them. As Family and Community Resource Day, and he urges all of the residents and guests that are here in the city of Brockton to celebrate this day with them. So let's give them a hand. So just to give you, before we move into um, a really wonderful video that some volunteers put together um, for, t for your benefit tonight, I do want to introduce a couple of people who are in the audience. Um, Fifty years ago, a man who was involved in the school department had a vision about how he was going to help youth who were involved in the court system. 
That program 50 years ago was what grew. It was Youth Resource Bureau, then it was Brockton Family and Community Resources. Then as Brockton Family and Community Resources grew, we spent a year trying to come up with a new name. Finally, our, direct, our um, chairman of our board, David Madoff, said just drop the Brockton. It was because we had moved from Brockton. We were now in Quincy, we were in Taunton, we were in Raynham, and we were in Hyannis, the Cape, and the Islands. But it was 50 years ago that this young woman's dad started this agency. So at this time, I would like to introduce to you, I think she's crying back there, Susan Cash and Mullaney. Stand up, Susan. And also with Susan tonight is her cousin who worked very hard when it was Youth Resource Bureau. He was just sharing some really funny stories all the way from Vancouver, Canada, Patrick Condon. Thanks for coming. So tonight's event was to honor people. In order to pull something off like this, we have many, many sponsors that um, come to us and um, write big checks. This year's major sponsor, we're very grateful to the Prone Family Foundation. Steve Prone is right here in the front. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Steve's been a real friend of our agencies, and we appreciate your support. A second long-term long supporter is In Good Health. Um, their table is over this way, and I know that um, your big boss had to leave because he had to go get his children. Admirable. Um, but I want to thank you. His sister is here and some other family members. Thank you so much for all you do for the agency. I would go through the long list of sponsors, but they are all listed here. They are in your pro program book. We love each and every one of you, and it is with out a doubt that agencies like ours could not succeed and do the work that we do without your help day in and day out. Um, at this point, I'd like to turn the microphone over to my boss, Attorney David Madoff, um, who has kept us rolling for how many years now, David? More, a lot. A lot. <laughs> I think almost 15 years now. Yeah. He's been with us for almost 15 years. So our favorite friend, David Madoff. Uh, I probably don't need to tell you that nobody is Pat Kelleher's boss. Um, I am honored to be the, uh, to be the chairman of the board, uh, along with all the other board members. Um, but. Uh, uh, it is the work of Pat and her entire staff that keeps this place going. Uh, we just, you know, we're just in the boardroom, you know, how many mandatory meetings a year? For, you know, five meetings a year or something, and, and the work is unbelievable. Um, so I think uh, what I'd like to do, uh, we're going to go with, uh, yep. okay. Um, uh, we'd like to present uh, to you tonight our honorees who you've already met uh, earlier, uh, but we'd, uh, they've been honored by the government. Now we'd like to honor them. Um, first is Dr. Claire Appling, uh, who always knew she wanted to be an educator. Her career began after graduation from Bridgewater State University in 1954 with a teaching position at West Junior High School. She then went on to become a history teacher at the old high school. She proved to be a trailblazer, becoming one of the first housemasters at the new Brockton High School in 1969 and one of the only a few women in the school administrator role at that time in Massachusetts. I also learned tonight that she's the neighbor of one of my favorite people, Doc, uh, Mo Rubin. I don't know if you remember Mo, but uh, his family's here tonight and they let me know. They said, I know her, she was, she was my dad's neighbor. Um, so Dr. Appling uh, is a, a valuable role model for young women and a dynamic champion for young people in the city of Brockton. Uh, please welcome again, uh, Dr. Claire Apple. Can you hear me? I think so. You'll hear my voice anyway. The uh, students could hear my voice very, uh, 
<laughs> distinctly. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody who had something to do with my getting this award. It was a complete surprise. And I want to congratulate Pat and her staff and uh, the community work that we've had here. My recollection is Larry Cashin, and uh, I believe it's 18 Newton Street or 16 yeah, Newton right. Street, so I have the, uh, remember that. And I said, 1968, what was I doing then? We were planning for the new Brockton High at that time. Uh, some of you were at the old school on your double session. So that uh, is another uh, milestone for the city of Brockton. But my, I grew up in Brockton in the Campello section, uh, actually 11 Hancock Street. And when I was uh, 17, I started working on the playgrounds during the summer. I worked at Salisbury Park the first summer, made $25 a week, and took home $22.50. <laughs> and then I went to the, uh, where South Junior High is now, and uh, Buckley Playground, where the Gilmore School is, and uh, then I did the Arts and Crafts program for the summer. I don't know why this is doing that. Step uh, a little bit. Step you're back. Good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did the arts and crafts for three summers uh, for the city playgrounds. And uh, I got tired of. Who's in charge of the mic? Who's in charge? I don't know. I got tired of. I'll get off the mic in a minute and just use my voice. Uh, I got tired of that and I went to the uh, Camp Playland in Brockton, the Jewish Day Camp. And my first job there was with uh, nursery school children. And I, uh, we were the lamb group at that time. So not to delay, but I continued working there and ended up directing the camp. And I started at BC for the doctoral degree. And in the meantime, uh, not me, because I never was talking. Closer to the mic, I thought it was I don't think so. We'll try it. Closer? Better? Yeah. OK, we're finding the secret for the next person. <laughs> so at that time, we were in the process of uh, building Brockton High School, which was a year late in opening, 1970. We opened with about 6,000 students there with an open campus at that particular time. And uh, then we uh, made some improvements as the years went on. We really had no other plan uh, to follow except for other parts of the country that had established the House Plan High School. So when you see a graduation there, it was the uh, committee of the early house masters and uh, principals that set that up for the first time. However, uh, Brockton High has been successful from the beginning, and it is now. And I just wish that we could get more positive publicity for what goes on, not only there, but in other parts of Brockton, too. <clears throat> Uh, my advice to students that go there, if you see a problem, you go in the other direction. Be sure you get involved in some activities there, and you will do well. And I hear stories again and again of successes here tonight and all of the time, and that will continue. Uh, and don't ever worry about you know, Brockton High or sending someone there. They want an education, they're going to go to the best colleges in the country. We have awards we give to the senior class at the end of each year. I think there's 10 of them in each house. I wish that were on television also. I would just like, I wish some way we could get to the stations in Boston and here and uh, get Brockton in the news more. Mr. Martin is here. One of the programs we have is Brockton After Dark. We were involved with that because we heard kids have nothing to do. That's why we have problems in the summer. Since that started, they have activities every single night, weekday night during the summer. Even now, transportation and uh, some snacks that go with it also. So uh, one night I was over there at the high school watching the tennis courts, the youngsters were playing there. The inside we had the basketball tournaments going on. The Campanelli Stadium had a game that night and the Brockton Fair with all the rides was in the background. And I said, where are Channel 5, Channel 7, Channel 4 out here now to not really tape that panorama? 
So I don't want to wander uh, longer, but I could take a long time, and that's too long. But I really appreciate, I have two wonderful people who have helped me uh, as guests. This is Patricia Morgan, uh, who I call my adopted family. She brought up seven children uh, in the city of Brockton, and she's still working uh, part-time to homemaker. And I have Amy Corum. Everybody knows Amy with the new presentation that we had of our Brockton <laughs> orchestration a couple of weeks ago. And uh, she has been a wonderful friend, too. So I thank you for being an attentive audience. Glad we got the squeaking out of that microphone. And uh, if I had a long time, I could just uh, quiz to one of our TV uh, director over here <clears throat> and asked him how many theaters we had in the city at one time. So I wonder if any of you know that back, too. You can think about it. OK, thank you for everything, and Pat, yeah, and so on. All right, so our next honoree um, is someone that I've had the pleasure of working with, I think, since she came to the city of Brockton. So I'd like to ask Erin Spaulding to come up. Erin Spaulding is Senior Vice President of Youth Development and Family Strengthening for the Old Colony Y in Brockton. Erin has more than 20 years of experience in social services, mentoring, and youth and community development. There is no greater advocate for youth. There absolutely, I can tell you, there is no greater advocate for youth than Erin Spaulding. <laughs> I'm so happy her mom and dad are here to hear all these good things because I bet they're surprised. She holds a Master's of Science in Organizational Management and Leadership from Springfield College and a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology from Union College in Schenectady, New York. Erin began her career at the Y in 1997 as case manager in the Big Sister Big Brother program. Since 2000, she has driven and overseen the Old Colony YMCA's commitment to all youth development, family services, mentoring, and academic achievement a gap. She now provides administrative oversight of the YMCA's family services division that includes shelter, housing, and intensive wraparound support services to hundreds of families experiencing homelessness. One program Erin is most proud of and which one she connects her to FCR is the collaboration to develop the Family Life Center at the YMCA to support vulnerable families. And the young woman that you saw in the video was a resident at the Family Life Center. Most of you who know Erin know she isn't a fan of titles, credentials, or accolades. First and foremost, she says it's a privilege to serve others, and her mission, she believes, is to support and advocate for others who do not have a voice. I can tell you that the first time when I met Erin, I got a call, I think it was from Father Clarity in Brock, when he was in Brockton, and he said there was this young woman at the Y, and she was gonna put together um, some housing for homeless families, and didn't I wanna get involved, and I said no. I had, you know, not really. Um, I had, you know, my own agency and I needed to get things done there. And he called me back and he said, please. And I said, I mean, what do you say to a priest? He said, okay. So I did. And that's how I met Erin. And, you know, at one time she had me down there doing shifts at the Family Life Center. Um, but, you know, when you think about the homeless families and the trauma that they go through, but again, the wraparound services that the Y and FCR and the many other agencies, the housing authority so we can move them from homelessness into permanent housing is outstanding. Um, and this really is one woman who doesn't want to take any credit for anything she's done. But since the Family Life Center began, how many units do you have now of a shelter? 60. 60 units of shelter for family <laughs> families. So congratulations, Erin. My friend, Erin. So thank you for this award. Um, I am honored to accept on behalf of the YMCA and to celebrate 50 years of the amazing work of Brockton fam I say Brockton family. I'm old school. Family and community resources. Um, I personally have seen the work they have done and the impact that they've had on the community. 
Um, and when I think of strong women and a, a courage award for, for being a strong woman um, and being in that category, I think of people like Pat Kelleher, right? Um, you know, you meet her once and you know you're going to know her forever. And I think she said it, but I don't think she knew the impact when I was young in my career. She was in charge of an agency and she pulled a shift when we opened the Family Life Center. And to me that said, there's nothing as a leader that you don't do. And I've taken that with me my entire career. So I want to say thank you, Pat. So I think about who helped and who supported me and to hear Claire Cronin say nice things about you. When I was 23 and I was petrified speaking at my first board meeting and I looked in the crowd and there were two women and one of them was, was Claire Cronin and she was a mentor to me in the years. And I think about the strong people in the community. I mean, if you met Janet Trask, right? Um, oh, she's here taking pictures, right? Uh, and I think about the women at the Y and the board members at the Y and I think of the mentors at the Y of Sue Healy and Joanne Matthews and Cheryl Johnson, who are dear mentors to me. Um, and they helped raise me. Uh, I started the Y when I was a, a baby, right? Uh, right out of college. And then I think of my coworkers and my people, and they're all here. And there's nobody in the trenches that I would rather serve with than my crew here. So thank you to them. Yeah. And then in 21 years, I've never invited my parents to an event besides a barbecue with Frank Clorty. Um, and, uh, right? and I was blessed to have two strong grandmothers um, as role models and strong females, and a sister four years my elder. So she would screw up, and I would learn kind of not what to do um, after that. Um, and the biggest feminist that I've ever met in my life, my father, who's here tonight. Um, he doesn't like to admit it, right? Um, and then my mother, uh, I was born in a blizzard six weeks early, almost in a car on her birthday. We are inextricably linked. And her strength and courage every day in good days and bad. What a testament um, for me to be raised by such a strong woman. So thank you. Um, but I'm not, here, I'm not here for any of that. I'm here to think about the strong women that we have served over the years at, at Family and Community Resources in the YMCA. When I think of the word strong, and courage, and I think of um, these women, it's not me, it's not my team, it's the people I'm privileged to serve through the work, the mission of the YMCA, the commitment of, the, of, of all of the stuff they do, and the countless women that we had a pleasure and a privilege to serve, to support, to encourage, to advocate for, to give hugs to, right? To cheer on in good times and bad, and most importantly, be proud of. These women, they're the heroes of this world. And when we opened the Family Life Center in 2003, and two of my favorite people are here tonight uh, to celebrate with me. So Claudia and Aremi, they are part of our Y family. They are part of my family, right? And I work really, really hard every day, and everybody at the Y works hard every day because of people like you. And you are the strong, courageous, and that, that's those words, strong and courageous, um, that's, that's who you are. And the definition of that um, and the resilience that you had just makes me proud to know you every single day. And you are who inspires me, right? You are who inspires me um, every single day. And so you are the real heroes and the strong women in my life. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, on behalf of the YMCA, all the people in this room, and obviously community and uh, family and community, Brockton family and community resources, right? Um, but thank you, everybody. I'm very, very proud to accept this award on behalf of the YMCA and my coworkers, um, and glad to be here to celebrate 50 years of amazing work from family and community resources. Thank you. So when Pat announced to you all that I was the one that changed the name from Brockton Family uh, uh, and got rid of Brockton, I sort of sat in the back and cringed there a little bit. Um, I do take responsibility for that uh, and, uh, and the blame, which I'm sure uh, uh, some people feel. Um, it was, uh, uh, I don't regret it, 
Uh, but it is it is fun to watch. I love Brockton, and uh, my kids grew up next door in Stoughton, and uh, you know I, it's it's fun to watch how close uh, everybody is in Brockton, and for such a big place, how everybody really knows each other. Uh, my friends over there, you know, the Rubens, they come and they grew up, both grew up in Brockton, and they know everybody here. They're like, oh, I went to school with this one, and went to school with that one, and uh, and Brockton really is a great city, and. Uh, and so all apologies in, uh, in that regard. Um, the, uh, my favorite award to give out is the Wayne McAllister Award. Um, we created it uh, several years ago. Speaking of Brockton, uh, you know, is there, raise your hand if you don't know or didn't know Wayne McAllister. Um, you know, he really, uh, he knew everybody and helped everybody and uh, was a, a, a great guy. And uh, one of the, the main, you know, we were pretty much the only two guys involved in this thing. Uh, you know, every, um, as, you, as you see, it, it's, uh, there aren't many of us. And um, I really uh, I respected him, I really liked him. And uh, we created this award before he passed away. This, was not, this is not in memory of Wayne. Uh, this was in honor of Wayne uh, because of all the, the work that he had done. And, and uh, he used to get up and, and, and announce the, you know, the winner, and uh, you know, we, we all miss him. But uh, you know, that's why this is really my favorite uh, thing to do. Um, Mark Lindy, uh, who, again, you've already met. Please. Uh, is the general manager of the Brockton Community Access. Uh, Mark is a lifelong Brockton resident and has lived in Ward 1 for over 50 years. He graduated from the University of Miami in 1983. Go Canes. Okay. Uh, was that with like Michael Irvin and those guys? Yeah. Um, he graduated uh, from the University of Miami in 1983 and followed that up with a master's degree from Fitchburg State. Sort of different football programs <laughs> uh, in 1992. Uh, Mark has been at BCA since 1994 and has lived their mission to encourage diversity and freedom of expression by citizens in the public, educational, and government access community through the provision of training, facilities, and cable cast time. Mark Lindy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll hold this here. Okay, thanks, Pat. I got to say first that it's really cool to be at a celebration of women and get an award as a man. Okay. Just kind of cool. I'm extremely honored to be receiving such an important award in the name of my lifelong friend and inspiration, Wayne McAllister. I'm eternally grateful for the recognition I have received for my volunteer work because I am sure that every other nominee for this award was as capable, if not more, of winning this award. I love being in the company of Claire Appling and Aaron Spaulding, by the way. They're champions, too. Last summer, we dedicated a street in Brockton to Wayne's memory, and I was honored to speak at that event. Some of you were there, and some of you weren't. So I'm just going to give a little excerpt, because Wayne was special to me. When Pat called me up, I thought she was calling me up about covering this event or promoting something with family and community and I pretty much dropped the phone when she told me. So what I, what I said about Wayne at the time was that he was courageous, fearless, humble, smart, unassuming, caring, and kind. I served on the school committee with him for cl close to nine years, and I miss him every meeting. I go there, and it's just a void. He and I analyze politics, post-mortem, pre-mortem, I would have loved to talk to him right now in this day and age, it would have been fun. But Wayne loved many things. His family, first and foremost, his friends, his community, his fire department, his school, Southeastern, but family and community resources, because we talked about that all the time. He was on the board, I don't know how many years, I can't even count him, probably close to most of the 50 years. And when I went to his 65th birthday party, and unfortunately he told me it was going to be, he wasn't going to have a 66th. I said, don't break my heart. You're, no, you're too young, you're not going to go. Unfortunately, he did. I think about him all the time. So I, I described Wayne with a Nelson Mandela quote at the time. 
And I said, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived, it is the difference we have made to the lives of others. So that was Wayne. And I hope I can be half a Wayne. So just to finish up on me, I've faced a lot of challenges on my way here, but each one of them has only strengthened me to make me the person I am today. Community activism is what both of my parents taught me. Volunteerism, to keep your eyes on a cause and a goal. My first job was the library before I was the cable guy, and I'm the chair of the library board, and I've been on that for 20 years. I love the library. But winning this award wouldn't have been possible without the inspiration I received from my late father, who I lost last September, um, my wife, Terry, who's my inspiration, and many friends and colleagues that are in this room for whom I have the deepest respect and I have derived the strength since my dad's death to keep focused and keep challenged and keep involved. I figure if you keep busy, you won't think as much. So I just want to thank Pat Kelleher, all the great work that your organization does, and I'm proud to be here, and I just thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Um, before we move on to the live auction, um, I just wanted to thank two people in particular tonight, although uh, there are many, many to thank. Um, actually, th three people. Uh, the first one I'd like to thank is Joanne Hoops. And uh, she, uh, she is another person who, you know, raise your hand if, if you don't know Joanne. I mean, she's, uh, you know, a, a, uh, been around Brockton for, you know, longer than I've been involved, but she joined us only a couple of years ago and has made a huge, huge difference in our fundraising and ability to, uh, to get charitable donations. Um, you know, the, the, as many of you know, the agency runs mostly on, uh, you know, federal and state funding and, and programs. Um, but, but we were told a few years ago that we really needed to step it up in terms of the charity and, um, and donations, and Joanne has been unbelievable in that. And uh, I don't have any flowers for her because she went out and bought the flowers for everybody else. So, but I did want to mention her and I want to thank you very much. Who she did buy the flowers for are first Beth. Beth Scher, who is the event uh, chairman uh, this year. And uh, for those of you who've been coming uh, for a few years, you can see uh, a pretty, big, you know, pretty major difference uh, in, you know, this and last year was a great event. Every year it just seems to be getting better, and it's really because Beth has taken it on. And uh, so I want to thank you very much, and uh, job well done. Thank you. Uh, and the other, of course, is Pat. Um, the uh, but um, just because, for no, I, I, I can't think of a particular reason, because she just does everything. I mean, even, you know, this event, all the fundraising, she is involved in everything. You know, if she were running the country, we'd probably be in much better shape right now. You know. As smooth as our president told us things were today, everything's running smooth, Pat would be doing a much better job. So uh, I, just, uh, I just would like to thank her very much. So there are a couple of other people there. Is, we had a very active volunteer committee this time. I don't know where, um, although she's not a volunteer, we pay her. Linda Siegel, where are you? Right there. This woman, 
has more energy than anybody I ever met in my life. She starts texting me first thing in the morning. <laughs> she was amazing. But I do want to thank the committee. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, and those of you who are actually employed at Family and Community Resources, can you raise your hands or stand up? I know there aren't too many of you here. We had a couple of other things that were going on, but Linda and Elaine and Sue, uh, Linda Siegel, Sister Sue, we have several re family relations up. Rochelle, whose son did the thing. did the video. We have fabulous, fabulous staff at our agency. We are truly, truly blessed.